Are you looking to exploit the local youth into giving you virtually free items? Then it may be time to consider creating your very own villager sweatshop, I mean uh, trading hall. We've got heaps of features like an easy way to fire your workers if they aren't performing up to your standards, and also an easy way to replace them. And without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the tour. Alright, starting off the tour, we're of course going to be taking a look around the exterior. So firstly, as you can see, this villager trading hall isn't quite two stories, even though it is, but it kind of doesn't really look like it from the outside. We have like this weird kind of half story here. I just thought it looked pretty interesting to kind of add this in I guess and it also lets us fit in a whole bunch more villages like you'll see as we go into the interior. But around the outside here we've got some nice azaleas and flowers around the place to kind of green it up a little bit. We've also got a bunch of lanterns on the front and back as well. And up here in this little weird half story thing we've got windows as well that look into some of the villages on the second floor. How's it going mate? <laughs> and overall it's actually a pretty simple design. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. It's very like unique looking I guess. All right, and with that all out of the way, let's head on to the interior. So on the first floor here, we have a row of nine villages. Yeah, we've got nine villages here on the bottom floor. And now a cool feature with this base is actually if we find a villager with a trade like this one right here, who the hell is going to want that? All we have to do to get rid of this guy is just head over here, grab our button out, destroy this block below him, and then place our button on and press the button. <laughs> Now you could of course just drop them to their deaths if you wanted to, but if you don't want the fun to end that quickly, you can do what I did and create your very own villager torture chamber. Okay, and like I was saying, uh, back to the first floor here, we actually have a little bit of storage in these kind of little nook areas over here as well. This is meant to just kind of store your extra materials, I guess, like your books and just emeralds and yeah. Heading up to the next floor, we can actually use a ladder on either side of the trading hall over here, and we can just head up to the second floor. And up here, we actually have 18 more villages in total, so we've got nine on both sides. And also up here is kind of where you'd add in your easy replacement mechanism. So you could just add in a trapdoor underneath this villager, put a button here, and then just send them down to replace this one. And yes, yeah, so that pretty much covers it for the second floor. We've also got a barrel over there, I forgot to mention. Heading up to the third floor, which is kind of the attic, we actually have eight more villagers up here. We couldn't fit in nine because uh, we'd have to put a villager here and then his job site block would just kind of uh, block the entrance up here. But yeah, up here is meant to be kind of the main storage area of the base as well. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of double chests all the way down to the end here. And yeah, it is a little bit crammed up here because we actually are in the roof of the base at the moment, as you can see. And so if you feel like you don't need these extra villages up here, you could actually lower this entire roof down by two blocks if you didn't like this kind of weird half story thing that we got going on as well. And likewise, if you feel like you needed more villages, this is of course pretty easily expandable. All you'd have to do is just repeat this section of the whole thing right here and just keep going to the left and to the right. And you can make this building like just as long as you want. And adding on sections like that will definitely increase the amount of villages that you can hold as this whole section right here pretty much holds like one, two, three, and then another one in the attic. So four. So you're pretty much adding like four or five villages every time you add another section. You could also add more villages in this section right here. It might be a little bit crammed downstairs, but who cares? And you could also, of course, expand down into the basement and just add an infinite amount of villages down there. But yeah, so that pretty much concludes the tour. If this seems like a trading hall that you want to create for yourself, feel free to stick around and we'll get started on the tutorial right now. All right, so first of all, you're of course gonna need a nice flat open area like this one. And we're gonna be starting off by placing in the base of all of our pillars, starting with the front left one right here. Now in between all of these pillars, we're gonna be leaving a gap of three blocks. So one, two, three, and then on the fourth block, we're gonna place the next one. Then we're gonna do this an additional four times. So one, two, three, four, and this should be six pillars long. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if we head to the very center here, which is this one, we're gonna be adding some additional pillar blocks in front of these two, like so. Now we can head back over to this side and we're gonna start bringing it around to the back of the trading hall. So we're going to, once again, leave a gap of three, place in a block, another gap of three, another block, and now we're going to be adding in the back here. So to do this, we're pretty much just lining up with this block here and then the next pillar as well. And we can just add in all of our pillars like so. And then to finish up, we're just going to add in our last base of our pillar right here. And now the next thing to do is to just go around and raise up all of these pillars to be five blocks high in total, including the one that we've already placed. So we're just adding an additional four blocks on top. Now, while we're up here, what we're going to be doing next is connecting all of the pillars together all the way at the very top with more spruce logs. Now,
Now, before we jump down, once again, we're going to be adding in some more pillars. So on the sides here, we're going to be raising these ones up by an additional two blocks. So all the way along the front and also all the way along the back. We're not going to be raising up these two here, only the ones behind it. Then once we get to the side here, we're gonna be raising these up by five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then once we get to the back, we can just do the exact same thing we did for the front. And there we go. That's pretty much it for all of the pillars. We can now jump down and start adding in our wall designs. Actually, one more thing before we start the wall designs, we need to add these little sticking out blocks on the kind of intersection of all the pillars. And on the front here, we add these in as well. And yeah. So we're just gonna add those in there on the side. We're not gonna be adding any in, only on the front and backs on just all the intersection points of all of the pillars, just like that. Now we can head back around to the front and actually add in our walls. So starting in the very front left wall here, we're gonna be first placing some stone blocks like so. And all of these walls are inset by one block, meaning that they're kind of on the inside of our pillars here like this. Then we can continue this up until we reach just below the top of the pillar here and then bring this around like so. And we're actually gonna remove this block here and turn it into some stone stairs and then in this gap here we're going to fill this up with some glass panes then below this window in between the two pillars we're going to be adding in some azaleas and also flaring azaleas be sure to just keep this pretty randomized between all the different walls and we're also going to be adding some random flowers and also grass in front of these azaleas as well feel free to leave this out if you want to i just feel like it keeps it nice and vibrant next up we're going to be adding some upside down spruce stairs in the corners here just below this pillar block and then in between and then below these we're going to be adding in some spruce trap doors now in between these two sticking out pillar blocks we're first going to be adding in two spruce fence gates on the sides and then in the center a spruce fence with a lantern hanging down and that's pretty much the exact wall design that we're going to be repeating in every single section except for this one here which is of course going to be the entrance so what i'm going to go ahead and do right now is just repeat this in every single section and there we go with all that done this is how your wall should be looking one thing i should quickly mention as well we're of course not going to be adding in the lanterns and this design on the side because we don't have our sticking out blocks i mean you could add that in if you wanted to i just feel like it made it more interesting looking not repeating this around the sides. All right, next up, it's onto the front entrance doorway design. And for this, the first thing we're going to be doing is adding in some more spruce logs in between these two pillars here. And then we're going to be replacing the floor with some textured stone and also stone bricks. So I'm just going to do it to these blocks here and then also extend the pathway out a little bit just so it looks nice. And then we can just add in some nice texture like so. Now we can first add in our archway design, which is pretty much exactly this thing right here. So we're going to do that on the outermost blocks here. Just add in your stairs, spruce trap doors like so. Then we might as well just quickly chuck this design in as well. Chuck our lantern on. And then on the left and right sides, we're going to be adding some stone brick walls on the tops and bottoms here and then connecting them up using some spruce fences. Now onto the actual door design here. What we're going to be doing is heading around into the inside of the trading hall. Along the top here, let's place in some spruce trap doors like so. And then we can use these ones while holding shift to just right click on them and place the remaining ones all the way down. We're going to place one more below the center one here as this one here is going to have the door. Uh, so we can just firstly close all of these up like so and then head back out and chuck on our door like so. And there we go. That's pretty much it for all of the first floor walls. Now let's move on to the second floor. So you're of course going to need scaffolding for this part. But I'm just going to fly for the sake of the video and making it a little bit quicker. So the first thing we're going to be doing is in between these pillars here at the very bottom, we're going to add some stripped spruce wood on the left and right side. And then in between these, we're going to add a spruce fence gate. Then above all of this, we're going to add a single layer of spruce slabs all along the top like so. Then on top of these sticking out blocks, here we're going to be placing some stone brick walls and then on top of them some stone blocks and then we're going to be connecting these up using some stone slabs on the top half of the stone block here and then the last thing is just adding a single spruce trap door on top of all of the stone blocks as well and now we're just going to repeat this exact design in every single section all right and so with all of your second floor walls added in you should have something looking a little bit like this next we're going to be heading over to any of the sides of the trading hall here and adding in the side wall designs so first of all let's head to the inside of of the wall here and add in some strip spruce wood blocks. So on the left side, this is only gonna be a single block and then on the right, it's gonna be two blocks. And then on the far right here, we're gonna be adding in four blocks like so. And then let's just repeat this on the other side as well. So bringing this one up to four blocks high, two blocks and one block. Next up, we're gonna be covering up these gaps with a pretty intricate design, so be sure to follow along properly. So firstly, we're gonna be placing a full spruce plank block in line with this pillar here. And then to the right of this, we're gonna place two slab blocks. And then to the right of this, once again, we're gonna be placing some upside down spruce stairs like so. You might have to remove part of this pillar in order to place that in. And then on top of this stair block, we're gonna add an additional slab on like so. And then let's just repeat this on the other side real quick. So slab here and then stairs. Coming to the right of the stairs, we're gonna add two slabs and then finally some spruce planks 
like so. Now while we're here, we might as well add in the trim for the roof as well, which pretty much is just like above this, but you'll see in a second. So firstly, we're gonna be taking this stone block kind of trim along the sides here. We're gonna be taking this out to the left by an additional block. You can actually use a full block for this. Then to the left of this, we're gonna raise it up by two stone slabs. Then we're gonna go up again with a solid stone block. Then to the left of this, we're gonna place a single stone slab followed by some stone stairs on top of that. And then we're gonna be placing some more stairs on the back of this and then again on top of this. And then this time for the final stairs, we're gonna place some upside down and on top of this, a stone slab. And now we're just gonna be mirroring this exact same thing on the left side here. So we're gonna be taking this trim out by an additional block. To the right of this, two stone slabs. To the right, once again, a stone block. Then a single slab, some stairs, more stairs, and more stairs. And now we're gonna repeat this exact same thing on the other side over here. And with that done, you should have something looking like this. Now, all that's pretty much left to do for the exterior is just connect up every single trim here to the other side with either spruce slabs or spruce stairs. So firstly, on this layer here, we're gonna be bringing some slabs all the way down to the other side. Then on the next layer up, we're of course gonna just do the exact same thing. And then when we get up to here, we're of course gonna be using some stairs instead. And yeah, we're just gonna fill in this entire roof real quick. And there we go. With all of that done, your roof should be looking like this. And now we're all done with the exterior. So now let's head through the front door and start off the interior. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is just continuing this textured pattern inside on the entire floor. So just a handy tip is to keep it predominantly stone. We don't wanna add too much stone bricks as it just kind of makes it look a little bit weird in my opinion. So. Just just add mostly stone and then just add in a light sprinkle of stone bricks around the place. Now something else we have to do real quick before we add in the villager kind of sections is actually fill in this gap here in between the stone blocks and this is to keep our villagers nice and just kind of centered in the area that they'll be seated in I guess. And now with that done we can add in our villager areas. So firstly we're going to be grabbing some strip spruce wood and then heading to the left side of the wall here leaving a gap of one block we're going to be adding in two like this and extending this up to be four blocks high like so. Then at this point, if you want to add in your villager discarding system, what you do is replace this block here with a spruce trapdoor, and then just dig this hole down as far as you can go. And that way, when you press the button that you'll place on here, the villager will just fall to their demise or into your torture chamber, if you're into that kind of thing. And that way, instead of actually having to kill them with a sword or something, you'll get like kind of the debuff or whatever. But if you just let them fall to their deaths, nothing bad will happen to you. Next up, we're going to add in some upside down stairs right here. And then above this, we're also going to be adding in some spruce planks. Now, of course, this block right here is where you'd add in your job site block, like a lectern or a smithing table or whatever the hell you wanted. But I'd recommend obviously leaving these out for now as you're going to want to, of course, get your villagers in here. And I'll explain how to do that once we've actually filled up this entire area with this kind of design. So continuing on to the right here, we're going to leave a gap of one and then just fill in our entire kind of spruce pillar design again, like so. At the top here, add your upside down spruce stairs and spruce planks above. And also if you wanted your spruce trap door right here too. And now you kind of get the point, we're repeating this exact same thing all the way until we reach the right side wall here. So this is how your setup should be looking right now. I've actually decided I'll leave how to get the actual villagers in here till the end of the tutorial just for those that want to kind of just build the whole thing without having to skip ahead of me explaining how to do it right now. So just make sure to continue on till the end of the video to learn how to get your villagers in here. So the next thing we're going to be doing is adding in some spruce slabs for the first floor ceiling and this is pretty much directly in line with the top of this area right here and we're just going to be filling in every single section here with some spruce slabs, except for this one here and on the other side as well, we're gonna be adding our ladders in there. Now with our ceiling added in, we're going to be adding in our ladders on the left and right side. We're gonna to have to choose a side here that's gonna be going all the way up to the top. I'm just gonna choose the right side. So on the left side here, let's place in three ladders and then at the top, we're also gonna be adding in a spruce trap door right here. And then heading over to the far right side, we can add in our ladder that goes all the way up to pretty much the top of the roof here, all the way up like so. Next, we're gonna add in some lanterns and to line this up properly, what we're first gonna be doing is aligning ourselves up with this gap here and then kind of in the center of like the base area I guess which is this block right here we're going to look straight up add a slab on and add a lantern then we're going to head in a straight line over and in line with the door here we're going to add in another slab and lantern and then the exact same thing like we just did on the other side in line with this gap here slab and a lantern and then in these gaps here we're going to be chucking in a chest at the top a barrel we're also going to fill in this gap here with a spruce slab and then below the barrel we're going to add in a spruce trap door let's quickly repeat this on the right side as well. So chest, barrel, slab, and 
a spruce trap door. And now that's it for the entirety of the first floor. Let's head up our ladder to the second floor. All right, so the first thing we're going to be doing up here is covering in all of these gaps with some spruce slabs like so. And then we're pretty much repeating the exact design that we did down below. Instead, this one's only going to be three blocks high. So at the very back here, we're going to add in two spruce blocks like so. We're going to raise it up by an additional two blocks to be three blocks high like so. There we go. And also instead of adding our stairs and stuff, this time we're just adding some spruce slabs like so. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the design. We're going to be repeating this to the right once again and pretty much all the way until we reach the other side. And we're also going to be repeating this on this side as well for an additional row of nine villages. And now this is how your second floor should be looking with all of your cubicles added in. And then we can add in our ceiling for the second floor here, which is going to be on this block here, which is pretty much just one half block above our cubicle height here. And we're just going to fill in this entire floor with these slabs. Now to add in lanterns on this floor, we're actually going to be using the blocks that we're going to be placing above, like the job site blocks. And we're going to be hanging the lanterns from those. So we're going to have to actually continue up to the third floor here and add this in before we can add in the lanterns down here. All right, so the first thing we're going to be doing up here is on the right side, filling in this gap here with some spruce planks all the way until we reach the end down here. And then on the other side, we're going to be adding in some double chests. So let's first add in a first double chest. And you'll see this should be able to open because these blocks here are actually spruce stairs that are for the roof. Then to the right of this, we're going to add in a single strip spruce block. And then we're pretty much just repeating this exact same thing all the way until we reach the end of the wall here. Now, if you don't like this kind of weird gap underneath the chests, you can actually just place a slab underneath it to cover in the gap. And we can also fill in this gap here beside the chests with an additional strip spruce block like so. Now let's add in our extra villager cubicles up here. And to do this, we're first going to head all the way down to the end here. We're going to fill in this block as well. I accidentally missed this one. And now starting from here, we're going to be going to the right, of course, leaving a gap of one and placing in two pillars like so, and just repeating this all the way down to the end. Just like that, this gap here, of course, we're going to be adding in some chests actually, because if we were to add a villager here and place the job site in front of him, we're not going to be able to get in here. So we're going to have to leave this one blank and just instead place some chests in. And yes, the top one does open. And now all of these spots here is where you'd be adding in your job site blocks. I'm going to leave it blank for now as I'm going to be explaining how to get your villagers in here in just a moment. But instead, what we can do is actually in between all of these, we're going to be adding in some upside down spruce stair blocks. We're not going to be adding one here. That's my bad. We're actually going to be starting it here. And then let's just continue this all the way down to the end. And then on every second table, we're going to be placing a lantern on. So we're just leaving a gap of one and adding your lanterns on like so. And now real quick, I'm actually going to be adding these job site blocks in to show you how to add the lanterns on to the second floor. So I'm going to place all those in. We're going to head back over here. Now, obviously you're going to want to do this after you've gotten your villages in because then you can actually place these blocks in. So now we're going to head down. The first slab we're going to be removing is this one here. So spaced three blocks away from the ladder. One, two, three, remove this block and then chuck your lantern in, which is hanging on the lectern here. Then we're going to head to the very center, which is this one right here. We're going to remove this block, place our lantern on, and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So based away three, one, two, three, remove this slab and place your lantern on. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all of like the kind of base components for the trading hall, except for obviously all of the trade site blocks. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you how to get your villages into every single section. All right, so right now I'm going to show you exactly how to get your villages into a minecart, as it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So you'd preferably be building this where you have your kind of villager breeder set up, I guess. I'm just going to build it right next to the thing here. You'd actually want to build this pretty far away from this because then you'll be limited by the amount of villages that you can have or that you can actually breed in your breeder. So preferably do this pretty far away from your trading hall. So what we're first going to be doing is placing in two powered rails like so, and then to the right of this, a stone block. Then to the left of these two powered rails, we're going to place a single regular rail and then leaving a gap of one, we're going to place a solid block like so. Then we're going to continue our rails on top of this and actually remove this rail so that our rail here stays kind of angled upwards. Then on top of this rail, we're going to place in another stone block and another stone block to the left of this one. And then we can place a powered rail right here and also a regular rail. And then we're going to place another rail on top of this to make this one angled as well and then remove this rail. Now on top of this block right here is pretty much where you're wanting to kind of funnel your villagers into, whether you're doing that with water or by luring them with beds or something like that. This is pretty much exactly where you want your villagers to kind of accumulate. I'm just going to spawn some in. And now this is going to be like the input. This is where you're going to put your minecart that actually collects one of the villages. And then this is the output here that you'd want to send over to your trading hall. So I'm actually going to kind of continue this rail all the way over to our base here. And I might as well actually show you how this works before. So I'm going to add a powered rail here to actually stop the villager that's going to get collected. But what we can actually do is chuck on a button right here. This is going to send the minecart off, collect a villager, and then bring him over here like you see right now. 
Oh, they actually got stuck because this uh, minecart isn't powered. Make sure that you power this rail right here. And there we go. We now have one villager. We can continue doing this for as many villagers as we have, as long as we actually have a minecart on there. There we go. And we can just keep collecting our villagers. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Now to actually get the villagers inside the trading hall, what we're going to do is continue this rail off into the side of the wall here, and we're actually going to remove this azalea and two of our stone blocks. Then we can continue this rail all the way up until we reach the first section here, and what we're going to do is turn this like so. And then for the last rail here, we're actually going to be placing a powered rail and also powering that with a redstone torch or whatever the hell you want. And now what we can do is actually just add in some extra powered rails along here just to make sure our villagers make it to the kind of area over here, and we're going to power this one power these ones and I'm just going to grab one villager just to kind of show you how it works we're going to get him all the way into the inside of the thing here then what we can do is actually remove these rails and now at this point you can actually add in your job site block here just like so or you can place in a fence gate if you didn't want to place in your job site block yet and then we can just remove this guy from his minecart like so just destroy it and there we go now this guy should become a blacksmith kind of guy one day maybe maybe not okay <laughs> There we go. And yeah, so if you figured out that this guy actually has some pretty dog water trades, what you can do, actually, that's pretty good, I think. I don't really know. I haven't played this game too much, I guess. But yeah, if you don't like his trades, all you can do is just destroy this block here, place in a button, flick the button, and send him to his demise. See you later, buddy. And then we can just replace him with another villager. And so that's pretty much how you're gonna get all of your villagers into the first floor. We're of course just gonna branch this off over to this side, and then just repeat all the way up until the end. Now for the second floor, we can actually go through these blocks right here, and bring our kind of rails down, and just do the exact same thing. Except this time we don't really have an easy way to discard of our villagers. So what you can actually do is replace this block for now, with a trap door and fill in the back block so he doesn't go behind there and leave your bottom floor blank and that way if you get a bad trade here you can just open up the trap door send him down and then press the button down there once again to open this trap door and send them to their demise and then likewise for the top floor you can just pretty much do the exact same thing and yeah so that pretty much does it for the entire tutorial for the villager trading hall if I left out anything be sure to let me know in the comments this build was kind of complicated with all of the uh, ways to dispose of the villagers and get them in here so if I messed anything up, just let me know and I will reply to you in a comment. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to leave a like and also subscribe for future ones just like this. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next video.